Hi everybody, very welcome to Mentor and yet another video podcast. As always, hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. Today on the podcast, I am going to show you all the little nooks and crannies, all of the things that you probably have not seen inside of the 737 cockpit. So uh, stay with me and uh, let's see what we can find. Right guys, so uh, as we start here from the beginning, from the back of the flight deck, um, if you look in under the jump seat here, here there's a little room and uh, this is where you can put, for example, your flight bag if you're sitting on the jump seat and uh, this is also where we put our jackets. So jackets hanging here with a hanger and uh, this is a PBE, which is portable breathing equipment. So this is used in case of, for example, firefighting or so on. You can open that up and you can get a uh, portable breathing equipment that will give you oxygen if it's needed. Up here, we have our refueling headset. So this headset is used every time we're refueling with passengers on board. The uh, pilot monitoring has to have that connected and then uh, establish contact, make sure that there's nothing happening to the refueler, that not fuel leaks or any fires or anything going on. And if that happens, he will or she will contact the um, pilot flying and we can initiate an emergency evacuation. If you want to see how an emergency evacuation is done, uh, you can just get that, uh, collect that collection, the emergency, so the rejected takeoff and the emergency evacuation collection in the Mentor Aviation app. So, if we continue here at the floor level, down here, there's also a little opening and here is where we keep our documents. So all of the uh, certificates, the uh, insurance certificates, AOC certificates, all of that is contained inside of this folder which is something that we have to check as well before a flight on the first flight of the day. So this here, this is our jump seat and I'm going to show you how to open that if you just stay tuned for a little bit longer. These are gear lockout pins, you insert them to, uh, to lock out the movement of for example the, uh, the nose wheel so on. Um, we have to make sure that these are stowed here because if not one of them might actually be inserted into the landing gear and we might not be able to retract the landing gear once we've taken off. So this part of the checklist to make sure that they are um, in their correct place. This is the PA mic. So it's from here that we do our PAs and the reason we're using this mic and we're not using the uh, audio control panel which we could use as well is because we don't want to make the mistake. We don't want to for example start making a uh, ATC call over the PA so in order to to kind of avoid that from happening we use this PA mic and only for PAs that way we know we're not going to make any embarrassing calls out into the cabin that is going to our traffic control down here is the emergency with the manual gear extension access door okay um, I did a video about how to manually extend the gear. I highly recommend you to check that out. And uh, in order to do that, you need to open this hatch and you need to pull out the uh, handles inside. This hatch needs to be made sure that it is fully, fully closed because if not, you won't be able to retract the gears, all right? Because it disengages that mechanism. So, as so you go here, here you can see how you can move the seats forth and back. So um, this is used Obviously, we need to make sure that we can get in. So you move it forward first of all to get your flight bag in if you're a first officer here. And then you can move it out and to the side in order to get in. It's very, very tight here in the 737 cockpit. So we have to make full use out of all, um, all the little space we have. Now here, this is something I get a lot of questions about. This is the uh, P6 circuit breaker panel. So here we've got all of the different circuit breakers for some of the systems on board. That needs to be checked. Make sure that they are in. And the way to know if it's in or not is this actually has a little white part. When it's pulled, you get a little white part in it. So the best way of checking this is just what, looking from the side and see if there's anything that has been pulled. Now, circuit breakers that should be permanently pulled, here you can see the difference between a pulled circuit breaker and not. And the ones that should be pulled, they have these little red marks on them all right the little colors on them to, for us to know that yes these circuit breakers are actually supposed to be pulled but here you can clearly see the difference 
between a pulled and a non-pulled circuit breaker. So that's how we check that. There are also some more circuit breakers down here, for example. We very rarely use them. That uh, metal thing is to make sure that we don't accidentally kick it and open it. There's also some circuit breakers. And this is not something that normally people know. There's some circuit breaker for the lighting here under the uh, rudder pedal adjustment crank here. So now we're getting into some stuff that people probably have never seen. So here behind the first officer on the right side, you have another little opening. And there we have some excess uh, lids. That's our uh, kind of load sheet paperwork in case we would need it and you can also store some other stuff here if needed just make sure that it's properly latched here guys this is something i have done a video about but very very um that was quite a while ago now so these are the spare bulbs when we do our setup in the morning and if you want once again if you want to see how a full setup is done uh, i have a collection inside of the mentor aviation app it's called the uh, full setup from cold and dark to ready to taxi Part of that is doing a light test and when we do a light test here i can actually show it uh, we put the light test to test then you see that all of the lights comes on in the cockpit okay it looks like this and we have to go through all of the different panels to make sure that there's no bulbs that are missing so each one of these little lights have two bulbs in it and if one of them is not working it will come up as half bright okay so it's fully bright now and then you will see half of it being illuminated if one of the bulbs were missing now if we find that the bulb is missing we're missing redundancy so we have to make sure that we have replacement bulbs and they are in here so here are the replacement bulbs from all of the different uh, this is where you can see that this is a uh, kind of 1960s technology because they have the old good old bulbs here but basically we have a spare bulb for every occasion here if we need to otherwise we will have to call engineering and make sure that they fix it now it's very important that you make sure that this is correctly latched into place so it doesn't fall down because that could pull out the circuit breaker so that's not good so on the side here next to each pilot you have the uh, sun visor stowed now that should be stored in its little pocket here like that and also fire gloves needed in case of fighting fire for example you have the fire gloves here on the side here coffee cup holder very important this is the oxygen mask that we hopefully will never use but it's there in case we lose pressurization or if there is uh, contamination in the air so smoke for example put that on and there will be a video specifically about that uh, this is the captain's side, this is where I sit. So remember that I've been telling you guys that you uh, that the captain is the one that is controlling the aircraft on the ground. And that's because you have the tiller here. So this is a little steering wheel, okay, that we use in order to move the nose wheel. You can use the rudder pedals as well. That will also move the nose wheel, but only to a certain extent, only to a limited uh, amount of degrees. This one will move it to its full extent, okay. But as you can see, on the first officer's side, there's nothing, all right? There is the fit for it, but it is not installed. So there it is, and that's why the captain is the one that's controlling the aircraft on the ground. Here, it's a uh, spare um, mic. So from here, we can actually call air traffic control, for example, if we are not using our headsets, if we're sitting in the cruise and headsets are ne not needed, well, then we can switch over to speaker, like that, and use this one instead so a lot of questions about this basically these are the transmission buttons up here okay so that one if I select that it means that I'm transmission uh, I'm transmitting now so if I select that I'm transmitting on VHF 2 normally primary collection is transmitting here on VHF 1 and these ones they control the volume okay so if you press in let's say that you have this one this one is illuminated it means that we are both listening and transmitting on VHF 1 but you can also push this one down change the volume 
Now you're also listening to VHF 2. Okay? I'll probably make uh, a little bit more of a detailed video on that later on. So this aircraft is CAT 3. So if it's not, if there's some kind of technical malfunction with it for something, they change this little placard to a red and white one, which is then showing that it is CAT 1 only. And this is company specific, so it might be different in other companies. What else is there to show? Well, this is my flight bag with my uh, coffee and everything that I want. So here, that's the sun visor, okay? So as you can see, there is a release and a lock. In order to put it up, you put it to release, because that releases the little hatches here. And you put it up here. This is the little railing it goes onto. So there, lock it in position, and now it's sitting, and you can just move it into whatever position you want. Do not lock it onto this. This is only a handle, this is just for moving around. Do not put the uh, sun visor on that. To release it, you just open it up, you put it back in here, where it came from. Cool, that's it. Now guys, if you have more questions, I mean, you, I'm, I'm assuming that you're fairly familiar with rest of the cockpit here. I might do a full video on that sometime. Uh, uh, these are more just kind of stuff that I know that you probably don't know about. Oh, I forgot. I promised to show you the jump seat. So when I do line checks, this is the, uh, the seat that I'm sitting on. So everyone gets in and basically when the paperwork has been received and everything, then I put the jump seat down like that. Open up the latches like that. Lock it into position like that. And the headrest. So that way you now have a fully functioning crew seat, seat belts. And here is where we put the headset. And there's my coffee holder little bit dirty at the moment needs to be clean and the oxygen mask so each crew position here has an oxygen mask there's one here there's one there if someone is sitting on this jump seat and then obviously one for each flight crew member as well so that's how that is done store it in position make sure that there's no nothing sticking out like that put it back in and it's working again. Okay? Cool. Now guys, if you have any questions about this, anything else that you would like me to show you, well then please send in a message below and uh, I'm gonna resume my uh, YouTube vacation here now, guys. So, uh, so guys, I hope you enjoyed that little tour of the cockpit. Uh, if you have more questions about this, like I said, then please put it in below in the comments. Um, make sure that you share this and that you have subscribed to the channel. Because if you don't, you never get these cool little uh, little tours in the cockpit. Um, I am going to be in uh, Manchester on the 6th of July on the Pilot Careers Live event. I hope to see as many of you as possible there. And if you want free tickets, then go into the Mentor Aviation app. I have a forum called Meetup. Uh, in there, there is a discount code. You just use that discount code. You put it in before you buy your ticket and the ticket's gonna be completely free. I wanna see as many as possible in there. And I'm gonna do a 25 minute talk as well at the event. So see you there. Bye-bye.